Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our CDFI certification webinar. Actually, it's the benefits of CDFI certification. My name is Katherine Baxter. I am going to be your moderator for today's event. And I'm joined by my hostess, Pam Williams. I'm going to turn the console over to her in a minute after I do some brief administrative announcements. I want to remind you that we are doing this live via Twitter. You may at any time submit your, any questions as well through Twitter at, at the NCUA. So we have our um, social media specialists ready to entertain your questions, and so will our panel. Also, I want to remind you that we have a survey at the end of the webinar. It's a teal-looking clipboard on your console, so please, if you will, give us your feedback. We want to know how you like our new format that we're using. As you might be able to tell now, we are going to be live. You're seeing our panel. And they will um, address all of the benefits of CDFI certification and answer all of your questions. So now I'm going to move to our housekeeping information before I turn everything over to Pam Williams. Well, you know how this works. We always ask you to adjust the volume on your computer so that you can hear this webinar. If you'd like to resize these slides, please drag the bottom right corner, and you can do that, from this website. Please allow pop-ups. There's an Ask a Question feature on your console. Throughout the webinar, we'd like you to funnel us questions. Once you're, if you know the name of your speaker and you have a question for that speaker in particular, please address your question to the speaker. As always, in approximately three weeks, this webinar will be closed captioned for on-demand viewing. So now, Pam Williams is our hostess. Pam, I'm turning the console over to you. Thank you very much, Catherine. And once again, welcome to Benefits of CDFI Certification for Credit Unions. I am Pamela Williams, as Catherine introduced me, and I am the Program Manager for the Minority Depository Institutions Program here at the NCUA's Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion. I'm joined by Ikena Nwampa, who is the Program Manager for the Community Development Revolving Loan Fund at the Office of Credit Union uh, Resources and Expansion here at NCUA. And we're delighted to have two external guests, one, Michelle Dickens, with the Community Development Financial Institutions Fund, where Michelle is the Associate Program Manager for Certification, Compliance, Monitoring, and Evaluation. And then remotely, we're joined by Terry Katzer. Terry is the Executive Vice President of Elga Credit Union, located or headquartered in Burton, Michigan. So that's an introduction to who we are. We'd like to know a little bit more about you. So, Catherine, would you pull our, just pull up our first poll question? All right. Just send it out, Pam. All right. So our first poll question is, how familiar are you with the programs of the Community Development Financial Institutions Fund, or CDFI Fund, as we'll re refer to it throughout this presentation? Are you very familiar, somewhat familiar, or not familiar at all? We'll give you a moment to complete those answers. And the way you answer these questions, that radio button, you can click one of those. You don't need to send your response through our Ask a Question feature. But if you click one of those responses, then we will tally that. So are we ready for, to see what our results are? We are. Okay, let's go. Let's take a look. All right. Anticipation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the majority of you uh, answered not familiar and somewhat familiar. And actually that's fantastic because then you're well suited for this presentation this afternoon. Well, the purpose of our call is to create awareness amongst credit unions about the benefit of becoming Unity Development Financial Institution, or a CDFI. This is a designation that's conferred by the CDFI Fund, an agency of the U.S. Department of the Treasury. The CDFI Fund is the largest source of federal funding for community development. That's one of the things why NCUA thinks it's really important for credit unions to know about it. 
because credit unions are eligible to receive this funding. Mostly, the uh, credit unions in the past have received this funding in the form of grants. So for this afternoon, Michelle will provide an overview of the opportunities available through the CDFI fund. She'll also give you an overview of the CDFI fund and its programs. And then Ikenna will explain more about an opportunity for low-income credit unions interested in becoming a CDFI that they can more easily apply for that designation. Finally, we'll have Terry provide a credit union's perspective of being a CDFI. And then we will entertain your questions at the conclusion. So with that, Catherine, I believe, um, no, I'm sorry. Michelle, would you give us an overview of the CDFI fund and um, tell us why credit unions should be interested. Absolutely. First of all, I must say thank you for allowing the CDFI Fund to participate in this event. We've been a partner for you, with NTUA for a very long time, so this is actually just another step in that partnership for us, so we want to say thank you for that. The CDFI Fund um, has this enormous mission to serve the underserved populations, but how we do that is by providing um, capacity building dollars for organizations that can demonstrate certain um, criteria uh, to meet certification and then they have access to our programs and access to our funds and grants. So that's the way. You see the mission on your screen right now, which is very detailed, but in a nutshell, we are here to help organizations that are currently doing the work of a CDFI and that can then demonstrate that they are doing the work of a CDFI to become certified to, in, in order to access these programs and um, resources. Tell us a little bit more about the program. Sure. The CDFI Fund um, administers five programs and they are, uh, for some you have to be certified for, so for one you don't have to be certified for. But they are, the CDFI's flagship program is the CDFI and NACA program. And this is where you can get a technical assistance grant or a uh, financial assistance award in order to, again, build your capacity of the work that you're already doing. The BEA, or Bank Enterprise Award Program, are for um, organization, regulated institutions, banks, who are um, really working on their community reinvestment and putting um, resources back into these low-income distressed areas or low-income people. And so they have an opportunity to receive an, an award based on previous year's um, activity in order to, to demonstrate that they are doing that, that work. Um, the New Markets Tax Credit Program is actually a program that's for allocations of tax credits. And this is not a CDFI certified program. It's a CDE, a Community Development Entity Program, where, um, again, you need to be certified as a CDE, but you will then sub, uh, get, have to um, submit an application for the New Markets Program in order to receive uh, tax credit allocations, and that's towards projects that's approved by the CDFI fund um, that you can then disperse tax credits to your investors. Thank you for that, Michelle. Um, just two more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Capital Magnet Fund is, is a new program, and then we have the Bond Guarantee Program. And all of this information, as you'll see toward the end of our slides, are on our website, which the information will be there. So I can just that up for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm sorry. And so now the um, two programs that are the most popular for credit unions are the CDFI and the Native American CDFI assistance? Right, NACA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, great. Terrific. So now, now tell us, um, I know there's a lot to it, but tell us in a nutshell, what is it required, what is required to actually be a CD5? Sure. Um, an, an applicant who's coming in for certification must be able to meet the seven criteria that you see on your screen right now. To be, you must be, at the time of application, meeting all of these criteria. Be a legal entity. 
you pretty much established that right off the top by being conferred by NCUA. Have a primary mission of promoting community development. This is organizing documents that you will need to provide to the funds to uh, justify or provide more descriptions about the activities that you're primarily doing. Uh, be a financing entity. That's a simple one for a credit union as a regulated entity and your business daily. Um, demonstrate that you are actually being a financing entity by providing financial products and services to your borrowers. Um, primarily serving a target market. That we can have an entire workshop on, but target markets in a nutshell are either populations or geographies that um, we have that are identified as needing additional resources, not able to access the financial mainstream as um, some with, someone with means would do. We also have development services. So development services are activities that you're providing to your borrowers that are direct connections to your loan products. Um, maintain accountability to a target market. Accountability to a target market is ensuring for your borrowers, for your members, that you are understanding their needs in terms of wealth, um, what they need in order to, um, to in, for them to grow their wealth. So accountability is just telling the fund that we have people who are connected to our community. We know that we um, understand the community needs and here's the feedback from that community that will help you in turn to give the best products and services to your community. And be a non-government entity. Non-government entity means that the, the government in no, way, in no way is introducing itself and you are acting on the behalf of a government entity. Now all of these seven criteria, again, need to be in place at the time of that application in order to be certified. That's it in a nutshell. Thank you. So Michelle, um, you did a fantastic job. There's, there's a lot of information. And so where can um, credit unions go to find out a little bit more details if they're interested? Sure. The CDFI Fund uh, has a website, www.cdfifund.gov. We also have a list on your screen of all of our contact information um, so that you can give us a call if you have an account with us. Uh, you can send us emails through our email addresses that are also listed on the screen. So just give us a call at any time. We are more than happy to talk to people about your application, when a round is open during the, the award round. The staff on the program side are more than happy to provide some more information about um, submitting successful applications in order to see, receive an award. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Michelle. So from what I heard, CDFI certification is required to access most, but not all, of the funding opportunities that credit unions would be eligible for under the CDFI That's fund. absolutely correct. All right. So then, um, Michelle, you also talked about um, um, primary mission, and so um, it also sounded like what you were saying is that there were a lot of similarities between credit unions and the requirements to be a CDFI. So there sure. are some of those that credit unions already readily um, actually meet mm -hmm. by, virtually, by virtue of being regulated financial entities that are already in business. That's correct. So primary mission, as a low-income designated credit union, you already automatically pass that criteria. So when completing the application, you won't need to provide any additional information but for the, the designation letter that NCUA provides. Excellent. Thank you. So then that brings us to our second poll question. Yes, it does. And here it is. Coming up now. Does your credit union have the NCUA or state regulatory low income designation? Please answer yes, no, or if you are one of our federal government partners a representative of a credit union league or another stakeholder that's not a credit union, please answer not applicable for that question. And you know, Pam, I'd like to ask the audience as well to um, let us know, send us either, either via, via the Q&A, how you're enjoying our webinar thus far. Please send in your questions now. This webinar isn't as long as they were in the past, so we want to be able to entertain your questions as soon as possible. You think we're ready for results? Yes, I'm curious. All righty, let's see what's happening. Ah, 
Here we go. Okay. So wonderful, most credit unions that are participating on the call today are low-income designated. That's a perfect segue to our next presenter, um, Ikenna, who has some um, news about an important opportunity that NCUA has for credit unions that are low-income designated and are interested in CDFI certification. Ikenna, why is, the why is the NCUA interested in supporting the CDFI fund? and through credit unions? Well, um, the NCUA's, uh, the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion, uh, you know, part of the foundation of our mission is actually to help uh, facilitate growth for credit unions. And um, that kind of aligns with a lot of the CDFI funds programs um, as far as um, uh, the resources that are available for credit unions. Uh, so we feel like <clears throat> we feel like um, helping these credit unions that are already doing the job of, you know, providing uh, affordable financial services to the lower income and underserved communities. That is um, something that NCUA wants to help keep supporting credit unions for. So uh, our office is offering a streamlined process for credit unions to um, qualify for the uh, CDFI certification and then hopefully obtain it. So then tell us a little bit more about that. What does the credit union have to do to, to qualify for the streamlined application? And how is it streamlined? So the streamlined application uh, for the CDFI certification, what it does is uh, the criteria that Michelle discussed, um, it eliminates certain of, uh, elements in, the, in those uh, criteria. And we only uh, require the credit unions to complete a few of those uh, items out. Uh, in order to qualify, the, the first step in the process is credit unions need to submit their loan data to us. Uh, what we ask for is the prior calendar year's loan data. Uh, you guys gather and consolidate it. Um, then once you submit it to us, we're, we are going to perform, uh, you know, a round of analysis on, uh, on the loan data. What we, what we do uh, with that analysis is two steps. There's a geocode analysis. And what this does is we're just looking at your target market areas. We kind of begin um, determining where your loan activities were. Um, and then after, we do a, a target market analysis to kind of determine um, what the, the areas that you primarily serve, do they qualify you to um, move on to the next stage and use the uh, streamline application? Okay. So we kind of, if I've got this right, then the streamline application allows a low-income credit union to not have to answer those parts of the application that Michelle mentioned earlier a credit union already meets, like the primary mission or financing entity. Correct. So like the target market piece that Michelle uh, talked about, as she mentioned, um, that can be a whole webinar on its own. Um, NCUA is going to do the heavy lifting uh, for the credit unions for the target market piece. Um, and that's that series of uh, tests that we're running on the credit union's loan data to determine whether they are a good candidate for the CD advisor. Okay. So then in looking at the loan data from a credit union, NCU is A is able to determine that um, what percentage of the loans um, qualify under the CDFI funds target market requirement? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Then, um, what does the, um, I'm sorry, I think I asked you that one before. Um, then um, how and when can a credit union get started with, um, if they're interested in the, um, the streamlined approach? So um, every year we hold uh, a few intake periods, what we call intake periods, where low-income credit unions, um, they have the opportunity, they have a window of opportunity to submit their data to us, and we will perform the analysis and um, notify the credit unions about the results and let them know whether they qualify to use the streamline application or not. Um, we've had a, a round last, we've had our first round this year, I uh, believe that closed last month, and we have two upcoming rounds uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, one is approaching really soon, which is June 4th, uh, and it's ending on June 22nd. So if you are interested in uh, participating, um, you want to start gathering and uh, consolidating your loan data from uh, 
2017, and then you'll submit that information to us um, during one of these intake periods. If you're not ready to participate yet, um, we also have a intake period in September, and that will be beginning on September 10th, uh, ending on the 28th. Thank you, Aitana. So it sounds like from the credit unions that we know from the poll questions that we're relatively unfamiliar with in um, the CDFI fund and those that have a low income designation, hopefully then several of those will be able to take advantage of these couple of intake periods coming up this year. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, Catherine, I think we're ready for the third poll question. Well, how about I have a contact page for you. Okay. For Kenna. Oh, that'd be great. I, kn I know, because I know he's happy he's done. Right, oh. Kenna? <laughs> so credit unions that have um, or want to know more information about the NCUA streamline process can reach um, your office and department through um, the contact information here by email and telephone. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the poll question. Okay. You ready? Here it comes. So the poll question is, does your credit union anticipate needing funding to support new products or services, market expansion, or other needs? Answer yes, no, and again, in the case of the non-credit union partners, um, please answer non, not applicable. So Pam, for your audience that may be using Twitter, Kenzie is answering questions or taking your questions in on Twitter. The handle is at the NCUA. All right. Terrific. Thank you for that. So are you ready for the results yet? or Before we go to the results, can I just add a little bit to Kenneth's presentation? Absolutely. Just quickly, I just wanted to be clear that um, the streamlined process does not um, say that you're not, you, you, you're not, you do not have to meet all of the criteria for certification. The seven criteria that I talked about are still being met. It's just that you're providing some additional, your information to NCUA to corroborate um, uh, some of the questions in the application for certification, and you don't have to respond directly to those. So it's just a more, it's just a way for you to not do more work as you're um, completing the application itself, but all the criteria are being met wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that clarification. Here are your results. There we are. Okay. So it looks like overwhelmingly that most credit unions answered that they are, do have a need for um, funding. And again, that will um, hopefully um, help them to marry the benefit that we've already talked about of um, what CDFI fund can do to a credit union. Um, you kind of talking about how a credit union that's low income designated can more readily um, apply and how NCUA can assist them. And now what I'd like to do is have Terry Katzer from Elga Credit Union tell you about a credit union perspective. Elga Credit Union is low income designated by the NCUA. It is also one of the first credit unions to be certified by the CDFI fund under the streamlined process that Ikenna mentioned. And so, Terry, do us a favor and tell us about the membership and the community that Elga Credit Union serves. Yes, thank you, Pam, and thank you everybody for listening in and viewing the webcast today. Uh, like it was mentioned, we are a low income designated credit union and also now a very new CDFI and we use the streamline uh, process. So the demographics, just a little bit about that for our primary base of membership, our headquarters is located in Genesee County with the county seat of Flint, Michigan. We're actually in Burton, which we're right on the outskirts of the city of Flint. Um, probably not unlike most communities that relied heavily on manufacturing. Some of those jobs have, most of those jobs have gone away. So Flint has been in a decades long economic depression with those jobs leaving, a lot of the population has lost, so has also left, so declining population. We have about a 41% poverty rate, which is roughly three times the national average with that 9.7% unemployment. And through sending our 
loan data to the NCUA and them doing an analysis on it, they came back with that about 85% of our borrowers would be considered low to extremely low income. And actually the way we became a CDFI was because the NCUA reached out to us and said, you know, we think you would be a good, uh, a good fit for this to take advantage of the stream, streamlined application when it was first rolled out. And that's how we became one of the very first uh, credit unions to become certified through that application. And then on top of all of the challenges that Flint has, as I'm sure most everybody, not just in the country, but in the world has heard, we had a water crisis, an issue um, with lead contaminated water, which is just one more um, kind of blow to a city that was already struggling. So there's a huge need within our community for a CDFI credit union who has a mission to help underserved individuals have access to traditional banking. So uh, that's where Elga Credit Union comes in, and that's also where the CDFI certification comes in. Next slide, please. All right. So then, so I talked a little um, bit about access to banking, and about 16.5% of our households in our community are unbanked. 26% of the households are underbanked, and by definition underbanked, they're not taking advantage of traditional financial institutions. Therefore, they end up with non-traditional institutions or financing options, which can be an issue. Um, a lot of times they're predatory, and there's a couple of factors that lead to that. One is low qualifications, so low credit scores is a lot of the issue, uh, but also low income. And having low income doesn't always mean low credit scores. We have many members who have low income who have very good credit scores, and some of that's because we've educated them and helped them with that. Uh, but also a low level of financial education, and that's another thing that Elder Credit Union is very big on, is uh, educating those within the community about uh, finances and their finances, which has also been helped by being a CDFI and access to some of the grant funds. Okay. You have a question? So, um, thank you, Terry, for giving us that overview of the demographics and the, the market that you're serving. And so, hopefully, um, that will resonate with other credit unions that are serving majority low-income members or communities and communities that might be underserved or underbanked, as you mentioned, yours is, and um, otherwise economically distressed. Um, one of the things, um, Michelle, financial education, is that a type of um, service that you mentioned as, as part of um, the criteria for becoming a CDFI? Indeed, and we find that a lot of uh, credit unions actually provide financial education. We consider that at the CDFI Fund a development service. So when you're uh, looking at trying to figure out what types of development services are related to your loan products, financial education is certainly one of them um, that you can consider. Terrific. Thank you. And so now, Terry, tell us what does CDFI certification allow ELGA Credit Union to do that it didn't before? There's Three key areas, and a couple of them are expansions of things we were already doing, and then one of them is a, really a new area that we're going into. So first I'll touch on financial education. Uh, we have been able to expand our financial education programs pretty significantly since becoming a CDFI, and we did get a grant in our first, uh, the first grant round that we were eligible to apply, and we received a grant for nearly $800,000. Some of those funds are being used for development. Um, programs such as financial education. There's some that goes to administrative costs. And the, the vast majority, though, has gone into, it will be going into our allowance for loan loss for new loan products and expansion of loan products that we have. So on the financial education front, we have uh, hired, it was actually our collections manager, has created an entire curriculum and moved into being our financial success coach for our credit union. And she works with members of our community and our membership. Uh, our programs are not just for our membership, they're for anybody in the community to take advantage of. And she's put together a complete curriculum to help somebody with different life steps that they may have and different problems and struggles they may have within their life and educating them about how to handle their finances in those situations. Uh, just some of the kind of a little bit of overview of some of those topics that she discusses and has classes on are budgeting, first time home buyer, what do you do when you, you have a child who's becoming now like a senior in high school and there's a lot of expenses that go with that or they're moving on to college and there's a lot of expenses that, that go with that. Um, first time home, home buyers, automobile purchasing, things like that. So just trying to give people a leg up and a little bit of education on how to 
properly plan for and budget for all these different things that um, may happen in their in their life. And it goes down to the basics even of budgeting for how do I feed my family? How do I you know make sure that I'm budgeting properly to make sure I have enough money in my budget to put food on the table for my family? So it's a it's a great program. In addition to that, one of the extensions of this program has become uh, our success coach is actually now working with a program called Reconnections, which has some backing by Catholic Charities, and it's an outreach program to parolees to try to bring them back into the mainstream um, population with some financial education. That's just one piece of it. There's a lot of things, but we specifically are helping with the financial education piece for those, for those parolees as well. Then we uh, get into some of the loan products that we have. And every single one of our MSRs and loan officers goes through intense, very specific training on how to educate and counsel members on their finances, on their credit, and making good decisions uh, when they're doing a loan application. So um, one of the areas of lending that we're expanding on is our automobile lending to low income and possibly credit challenged individuals. So uh, we're, we're a very large um, percentage of our, autom or of our lending is automobile lending. And as previously noted, about 85% of that is to low income individuals. And we want to be able to continue to expand that and do more to help our um, communities because we believe that reliable transportation can mean a lot to a family. It can mean that they're able to get a job and keep a job it also has health impacts because it means that they can get their kids to well baby visits and doctor's visits and things like that. Um, they can get to the grocery store to buy groceries. So there's a lot of reasons why reliable transportation is very important. And we wanna make sure that Elgar Credit Union is being part of the solution. And by having some funds to put into our allowance for loan loss to offset some of the risk that's associated with that type of lending, we're able to continue expanding what was already a great program that we have. Second, or thirdly is the uh, new program that we've created. We're creating some new loan products for micro small businesses. And we've always served small businesses, um, but we didn't have products that were tailored for them for these small dollar loans. Uh, we don't have minimum loan amounts. We don't have minimum credit scores. We don't have minimum income amounts for somebody to get a loan. Uh, and now we're going out into the community and actually seeking these small business entrepreneurs that want to start a business. Uh, that want to expand their business, do some improvements to their business. And typically these loans are under $50,000. Sometimes they're just several thousand dollars. And we're finding that there's a huge need for that within our community. And by being a CDFI, we're, partner we're able to partner up with other community partners who can help connect us to the right people to loan the money to. And also with the Micro Small Business Lending One, we've partnered with the SBA through their Community Advantage Program to get some additional loan guarantees on those loans. So it's been a really good experience for the credit union, and we're able to bring that back and pay it forward into the community by leveraging the grant dollars that, re that we received. Um, we expect to leverage them 10 times over the next uh, three years, at, at the very least. Terry, thank you for sharing um, those insights with us. And uh, it seems that Elga Credit Union has looked at this, um, the products and services quite holistically in terms of uh, meeting the needs of your members and your community. Uh, with all of that experience, your CDFI um, under the streamlined uh, approach as well as being an awardee, what lessons learned do you have or advice for credit union officials that are considering becoming a CDFI? Sure. First, I would say, if, and I think most credit unions have the mission and philosophy that you know we are here to serve the underserved, and um, that's kind of what we that what credit unions were founded on. So hopefully, that's just kind of, that's a given. Uh, but I would say, from a standpoint of um, you know how to become a CDFI or ways to make it a little less um, work, I guess I would say, or or not require as many resources, would be try to take advantage of that NCUA streamlined application process if you can. I'm not sure I would be sitting here today saying we would, that Elgar Credit Union is a CDFI if it weren't for the NCUA reaching out to us. We were already doing great things within the community. We didn't really see how CDFI you know, would enhance that, but now we do, now that we are one and we're starting to have additional relationships with other community partners because we're a CDFI. So take advantage of that streamlined application that may be an easier pathway towards CDFI for you. And also, um, you may consider using a consultant for your grant request if you're not familiar with grant writing and specifically CDFI 
uh, grant writing. Uh, this was our first foray into it, so we did use a consultant, and it's just somebody who has a wealth of knowledge and has done this many, many times and can help lead you in the right, in the right direction. Terry, I think that's well said, um, particularly about the part about how sometimes credit unions are already doing this work and um, the CDFI fund, the designation, as well as the funding opportunities through the CDFI fund can make that um, kind of difficult and sometimes time-consuming work um, to be um, a little bit easier by providing some financial assistance. Um, and so with your contact information here, um, on this next slide, um, thank you for providing that so that um, credit unions that might have additional questions might feel free to contact you. Yes, absolutely. All right. So we hope this presentation has helped you better understand the CDFI fund, the CDFI designation, and how they may benefit your credit union. Catherine, let's cue poll question number four. Thank you, Pam. We have quite a few questions, too, for your panel. Okay. Quite a few. So the next uh, poll question, and is um, and the final one for today, is how ready and likely is your credit union to seek CDFI certification this calendar year? Again, the answers are very likely, somewhat likely, and not likely. You know, I have to admit, um, Terry's efforts with his CDFI program are very impressive. Um, even Terry turning your collection manager into an outreach specialist, that was great. That's phenomenal. What's even Thank more you, it was her idea. Give her all the credit. <laughs> it's a short turnaround period from the time in which he was certified to the time he received an award. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I think that's very impressive as well, Terry. That is awesome. Let's see what type of answers we got, Pam, okay? Okay. And here it comes. Okay. There you have it, right there. At some point. There it is. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're pretty much tied between very likely and somewhat likely. You know, I think that, um, Ikenna, you said earlier that sometimes a credit union isn't quite ready now. And so we understand that, that we didn't necessarily expect that all of the, the participants would be ready to submit um, their um, loan data for us for analysis right away. But, um, and that's good. So um, those of you who are able to do that, please, we encourage you to do it. And um, through one of the two opportunities that remain for the rest of this year. And those who are somewhat likely, consider it and give it some more thought. We hope that you will explore the websites and the various contact information to learn more about the designation and the programs so that you can um, hopefully move toward that um, very likely scenario in, in the near future. Um, Catherine, before we go to questions, and I know you said we had several, mm -hmm. I wanted to make one clarification with Michelle. Sure. Um, Michelle, so a credit union that's low income that goes through the streamlined approach through NCUA, mm -hmm. does that mean that the credit union is then certified? No. <laughs> so what that means is you are submitting an application based on the information that has been analyzed from NCUA, and then you're submitting that information, that data, collectively in one application to the CDFI fund. And we, the CDFI fund, is the only entity that will make the final decision as to whether or not you can be certified. Okay, thank you so you much for that. All right, Catherine. All right, we are ready to go into our Q&A. And I'm also getting ready to push out the contact page for the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion so that any questions you may have for us directly, there's our email address, phone number, and headquarters address. Also, please remember, on your console, there is a teal colored clipboard. That's our survey. So that's the one where you're going to tell, be able to tell us what you liked, didn't like about this particular webinar, and any recommended topics that you may have for us. You can also email me directly at curelms at ncua.gov and let me know if you have any 
suggestions outside of what we ask in the survey. We'd love to hear from you. So first and foremost, I want to ask the panel if you're ready for the questions. You ready? Panel's yeah. ready? Great. I can, are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. The first question is actually going to go to Terry. Terry, you've had a couple of people ask you this question. They want to know the asset size of your credit union. Sure. We're about $575 million. Okay. So by no means small. All right. I have another question for you, Terry, and then we'll switch it around a little bit. So the, the credit union asked this question, Terry. They said, was the credit union struggling to get loans prior to getting the um, CDFI designation? And um, have you been able to utilize all of it for increasing deposits? So it's a twofold question that you have here. Did it make sense? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, okay. So, no, we were having no trouble getting loans. We've had double digit loan growth year after year after year for several years now. We're over 100% lent out, 106.2% lent out at the end of April. That was our loan to share ratio. So, no, no, no tr challenges getting loans. Um, but we want our mission is not necessarily just to get loans, but to make sure we're getting loans also that will help our communities and make sure that we're doing it in a safe and sound manner. And I think that's where the CDFI grant came into play in that respect. Um, the C being a CDFI uh, from the grant through the grant process has not helped with obtaining deposits, if I understand the, the question correctly. Uh, but we actually have been able to increase deposits to some degree uh, because we're a CDFI and that's got us, that has gotten us on the radar of some um, different inst um, institutions, such as uh, I think uh, it was mentioned about the BEA program. There's also a deposit program for that where banks can deposit into credit unions that are BEA qualified and their deposits can go towards uh, some of the credits that, they, that banks need. And um, we were able to take in quite a few uh, deposits from other financial institutions because we're a CDFI and qualified under that BEA program. Okay, great. So now let's spread it around a little bit. I cannot. <laughs> you ready for your question? You have several. Okay, I think you are. You'll, you'll be fine. Um, so the credit union wants to know how often do you have to apply for certification? And um, if you apply for a grant, is it a one-time funding for a particular product, or can it be multi-year funding? So it's kind of a two-fold question. So that question may be for uh, Michelle. Michelle, the first part. <laughs> the funding part. The funding part. Okay. I'm sorry, Michelle. Uh, so once you apply for a certification, if you are um, certified, you actually do not need to apply again. You need to, you will need to provide annual data to confirm your certification. Um, that's a whole nother subject. But with regards to, um, what was the second part? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michelle, let me read it again. <laughs> so they said, how often do you have to apply for the CDFI certification? Right, that's just one. Okay. Great. Oh, I thought that was another part of the question. Well, you, I think you took care of the funding part. I think so, too. Yeah. Yes. So, I'm good. But you were. Thank, you know, you took Ikenna out of the hot seat, so I'm going to put him back in it. <laughs> and then I'll come back to you. Okay. So, Ikenna, you, I know this is a question that you answer all the time. A credit union says, um, if a credit union is designated as low income, what would be a reason it would not be able to receive certification as a CDFI in the streamlined process? Okay. So um, after the analysis, uh, the test that we run on the credit union's uh, data, um, what we're looking at is if the credit union is going to meet a general benchmark which we follow, um, which is uh, the credit, at least 60% of the credit union's loan activities um, need to be in eligible target market areas. Uh, there's a lot of technical components that go into the analysis, um, so I'll spare those details, but uh, basically if the credit union um, does not meet that 60% threshold for both the number of loans and the dollar amount, um, we will usually send that letter of credit union and let them know uh, they don't qualify for the streamline application. However, they still can pursue the CDFI certification through the standard application. 
Okay, so stay right there. I can. This is a sort of a follow-up question. Another credit union says, where do we get the online application to prepare for the data submission? So we actually, uh, if you go to NCUA's website uh, and you go to Cure's uh, micro uh, webpage, we actually have a program guide specific, specifically for this initiative. It looks like this. Um, and it's a 10-page guide that gives you um, all the details you need and um, the, uh, actually the electronic uh, form that they're going to use to submit the data and everything. So uh, I actually recommend that the credit unions that are interested, uh, you know, take some time and uh, get used to it, get familiar with this guide. Okay, great. So you can breathe for a minute, I okay. <laughs> now I'm going to go to Michelle. So Michelle, you may have answered this a little bit. So another credit union asked this question earlier. They said, what happens after I am certified? How do we know what kind of funding we can expect and what work is required? So they have sort of a three-parter. What happens? How do I know what kind of funding we can expect and what work is required? So you continue to do the work that you're normally doing. So nothing happens necessarily after you're certified. You receive a certification letter identifying what your target market is and now you would be ready to um, apply for any of the programs that, the, that your credit union is actually interested in. So I suggest, as Ikenna did, that you kind of just look at what's on our website and get familiar with the programs. Give us a call and we can talk to you about them. Um, funding comes in, in different forms. It can be financial, it can be uh, equity investment, it can be uh, a TA grant. Um, so that's out of my bailiwick. I work in certification. Again, I would punt that question to someone on the program side. Again, depending on the type of programs you're interested in and what work is required. Um, I don't know what specifically that's uh, directed to, what work is required to become maintain your certification. Uh, you certainly need to continue to demonstrate that you're meeting all the seven criteria um, annually. And with regards to any program awards that you receive, you have an, an agreement. And in those agreements, you will have very detailed um, program measurements that you will need to, to meet uh, for the duration of the program awards. Awesome. So, Michelle, you know, one of the things I think might be helpful for credit unions is that on the CDFI Fund um, website, you also have that award section yes. where a credit union could um, actually access um, your past award program books and use that to um, even search for other credit unions that have received awards and get an idea of the kinds of um, activities that the CDFI Fund have, has funded credit indeed. unions. Yes, indeed. So that would be part of the research that a credit you might want it to, to undertake. Okay, great. So now let's step back to Terry. Terry, you have quite a few fans here. Our, actually, our audience. You have quite a few fans in the audience. Here's a good Excellent. question for you. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, credit union wants to know uh, what your current loan to share ratio is and your capital ratio. The loan to share, as I mentioned, is about 106%, and our capital ratio is 14.42. Awesome. Here's another question, follow-up. This is always something that um, financial institutions are interested in, this particular one. How much did your delinquency increase after you becoming CDFI certified and developing programs? How much did it increase? It hasn't increased at all because we've been operating this way for decades, really, in the way that we lend and our lending philosophies and trying to serve the underserved and, again, helping those with low to um, modest means. And so nothing has really changed. Actually, our, our delinquency has been trending downward for the last several years, and our delinquency right now is at about 1%. Uh, Charge-offs around 40 basis points, and we have an ROAA of um, roughly 2.5. So, you know, everything as far as financially, we are very strong, very stable. Absolutely. You know, fantastic. Go ahead, Pam. Well, the, the, the question um, raises um, a really good point about 
CDFI certification really not being um, any kind of evaluation or analysis of the financial safety and soundness of a credit union. So a credit union could be of any asset size, mm -hmm. and um, there is nothing about the certification application that requires the credit union to have a certain safety and soundness rating or, or a certain performance ratio. Um, it really is more about the work and the mission that the credit union um, achieves. Now those factors in terms of the safety and soundness really get um, more evaluated if the credit union chooses to apply for funding, and then therefore that's part of your underwriting process. That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's go to IK as he takes a sip of water. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You have a couple of questions here. One credit union wants to know, how do we find out if we are low-income designated? That's a good question. Um, to find out about your low-income designation, um, it, you can contact, uh, there's another branch of our office, um, DCA Mail, I believe, um, DCA Mail at ncua.gov. Um, contact them, they'll let you know the information, they'll run an analysis to determine whether your credit union is low-income designated or not. And um, once you if, you, if you do qualify and you obtain that designation, that will kind of open you up to uh, a lot of the resources our office has available. So this is a little bit of a follow-up question, um, Akena. Another credit union says, what percentage of our loans need to be low-income designated areas? And then they had a part two, by number or balance. So can you clarify that? Yeah, so the percentage, we, we look at your total, uh, we look at your uh, total loan originations uh, from the previous calendar year. So this year we will look at your 2017 uh, originations and at least 60% of those loans, of the total originations, um, need to be in qualified, uh, what we call uh, target market areas. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the nuances of our analysis is, is very technical, and um, I just I, I elect to spare you guys uh, the trouble. Um, however, our, our program guide does have a lot more information on how we uh, review, uh, review your loans and what qualifies and the benchmark that's necessary in order to be uh, qualified for the streamline application. And just so you know, um, the 60% just didn't come out of the air for the streamline application process. It is actually 60% in number and dollar for the regular application as well. So that is the minimum uh, requirement for target market providing, providing um, products and services to your target market by the CDFI funds. Mm -hmm. and, and NCUA is just doing it the same way. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. May I interject, Catherine? Mm -hmm. So, um, Michelle, for and I know we touched on this a little bit earlier about a credit union that doesn't meet the streamlined, um, um, uh, doesn't qualify for the streamlined mm -hmm. application, or even a credit union that's not low income. Um, can only low income credit unions be CDFIs? Um, tell us what happens in, in those two cases. What would we want um, credit unions to know about that? Sure, credit unions that do not qualify for the streamline process and or is not uh, low income designated uh, can still apply for certification. The only difference is that you might have to demonstrate that you meet more criteria than you would need to demonstrate if you were applying to the streamline process. Thank you. You know, Michelle, that was another question that I was going to ask you. and. You seem to be able to pick up on that really quickly, or Pam did. <laughs> One of you did. So here's a good question for Michelle. You may have already answered it, but it certainly bears answering again. So a credit union says, so if we're CDFI certified now, do we always stay with that designation, or what are the ongoing requirements? Sure. That's a great question. Um, once you're certified, you will need to come in to be uh, reaffirmed your certification. And we have an annual certification reporting requirement as a CDFI. Um, your target markets could change.
some um, material event can happen within your organization, you will need to let the CDFI fund know that information, and then we can make uh, some analysis and have some conversations with the credit unions to determine whether or not you're actually still maintaining your certification. Okay. So here's another question for you, Michelle, really quickly. Um, this is a good one, too. Credit Union says this. They have branch offices that are located in low-income counties. Mm -hmm. So they, here's their question. Is CDFI available on a county basis versus the location of the main office? Sure. As I can mention, you're really, we're really looking at your, your market, where you're serving, and you're trying to destroy trying to describe to us your target market and that 60, at least 60% of your activity is to a designated target market. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on a census tract level, a countywide level, or a statewide level. You need to really tell us where you're serving and that you have accountability to those geographies or people and we can affirm your certification. Okay. You know, we're getting down to the wire. so. Terry, you're going to get to sort of send us out before I ask Pam if she has any closing comments. Here's what a credit union wants to know from you, Terry. So once you re completed your streamlined application, what was the time frame to be notified of your certification and receiving a grant? Uh, as far as the time frame for being notified of the certification, honestly, I don't recall that. Um, for the grant, uh, we were they like said the very first round that was after our certification, we we applied for that. That process does take some time. It takes actually several months to find out did you get the grant, and then several months after that before the the funding takes place and you actually receive the funds. So it's it's not what I would consider to be you know a very quick like if I need money you know if I need some type of assistance today you know this you're probably gonna have to plan out a little bit further than that and. Um, think about what could you use this type of funds for maybe a year down the road. Okay, great. Pam, before I send us off, do you have any closing comments for our audience? We really hope that the um, participants have received um, inf important information about, again, the benefits of becoming a CDFI. Um, those of you who stated that you were um, not very familiar with the CDFI fund, itself in its programs and activities. We hope this has um, at least increased or piqued your interest enough so that you will go and learn more about it. Likewise, with um, those who are low income designated, of the, of the majority of you uh, indicated that you were, and if you're already not a CDFI, that you would also look at the material on the NCUA website and consider whether or not becoming a CDFI fits within the growth strategy, strategies for your credit union, and if so, consider submitting your application for our consideration. So I also would like to thank Terry uh, for joining us and being willing to share the insights that his credit union has learned and also its experiences. Michelle, thank you so very much yet again for another wonderful outreach we've had with you, and I cannot, as always, um, thank you for your participation as well. All right. So don't forget to fill out our survey. And we also like to thank our behind the scenes person, Franz Ayento, Patty Hunt, and Kenzie Snowden, our social media guru. We please join us um, June the 13th because we have our grant webinar. And we're gonna do this again. This is Katherine Baxter. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day and a great afternoon. <laughs>